Nabi, the birth anniversary of the Holy Prophet Muhammad, celebrated by Muslims throughout the world. It's a pleasure this National Holy Day to be talking to Maulana Saeed Muhammad Tasdik of Bangalore, India. He's been in Guyana for about six years, and as I said earlier, it's a delight to have him so that we can understand what Yom Nabi is all about and what's the difference between the other holidays. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful. First of all, I want to congratulate all the Muslims of the world, especially Muslims in Guyana, who are celebrating the Yom Nabi, the birth anniversary of our noble Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi wa Wasallam, who is the seal of the Prophets, the final Prophet, there is no prophet after him so uh, all muslims submit muslim name itself meaning the one who submit totally to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so this is the messenger who came with the message of god through the book called quran so it's pleasure for me to be here in guyana today our Guyana radio so the, the program is called a better world better what yes. okay so uh, I use this opportunity to congratulate all my Muslim brothers and sisters and also non-Muslim brothers and sisters because uh, I have been observed in Guyana that even non-Muslims Christians Hindus Rastafarians Baha'is all those people here they celebrate each other's festivals yes, we do. and that uh, is the best uh, country I ever uh, saw in this regard especially if you go in some other countries like in Middle East or in even India and Pakistan it's hardly you will see I'm not denying that completely they don't come but hardly people come to celebrate each other's festivals but here almost people celebrate each other's festivals so we need to keep it up to strengthen our brotherhood so all are celebrating the Yom Nabi festival, the birth anniversary of our noble prophet, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Okay. So, so you asked me about the uh, difference between this Eid yes. and two other Eids, which are the most famous Eids in the Islamic world. The first Eid is Eid al-Fitr, which is the end of the month of Ramadan. After the month of Ramadan, the first day of the next month, which is Shawwal. So, entire Muslims in the world, they celebrate the Eid al-Fitr. It's a thanksgiving to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who bless to all Muslims, those who can able to uh, enjoy being in the month of Ramadan, the holy month, uh, fasting, giving in charity, and reciting Quran and worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the other Eid is the Eid al-Adha, which is the 10th of the last month of the lunar calendar. 10th uh, day of last month of the lunar calendar. Those who are blessed with Allah, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they will go to Mecca, they visit Mecca and perform pilgrimage. And those who not there, they sacrifice here, the wherever they are, and by this way, they pray and they, uh, they listen to the uh, Maulanas and Meijis here and the scholars. And they, by this way, they celebrate the Eid al-Azha. The difference is that two Eid are the prescribed Eids. The festivals in which we have a special prayer and special things to do. That is the pre prescribed things. We cannot add and we cannot... Uh, change it okay. but this Eid is something we, we will show the love towards our final messenger the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and it is uh, something honoring Rasulullah so this is not prescribed Eid but the Muslims will celebrate it to show the, uh, the love to their messenger Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam okay so would you say so we don't need to do anything particular here Normally, people go to the centers and masjids and they uh, recite the Holy Quran and they interpret the Quran, they talk about the Quran and also they talk about Rasulullah, the Prophet Muhammad and also they talk about his lifestyle, 
and they try to emulate and they try to follow his footsteps and also it's a kind of a spiritual awakening as well as uh, in our cleaning our inner self and reforming our society so that's the best thing and also in here especially those who are uh, from Indian background they chant the Qasida meaning uh, some uh, like sometimes you will listen from this radio and yes. you will uh, in the, during this uh, uh, program definitely our viewer our yes. uh, and there are some qasida listeners they will qasida yeah competition also, also yes. we have the qasida is actually in, in urdu language normally here we say also we have in arabic in other languages too but normally here we chant the qasida in urdu language normally honor in honor of rasulullah talking about rasulullah his lifestyle his wisdom words his uh, teachings and all those things okay perhaps we can talk a little bit about his lifestyle muhammad's yeah. lifestyle and what's so significant about the way he lived okay let me put it in this way that Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam born at Mecca in 570 AD and uh, he was a trader in his uh, 20s and he recognized as trustworthy among all Arabs even enemies used to recognize him as a trustworthy and truthful people okay. used no, to bring... No short change in or anything like that when he was trading no, okay. uh, people recognize that he is the one who uh, can rely upon. Okay. So that's why most of the people, even enemies of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they used to bring their trust to keep those trust. Those days we had we had no banks and no uh, proper uh, that system uh, set up. Yeah. So it was a tribal you to, community. You to take a man's word. Yeah. For, yeah. So he was the one who able to establish such a. Uh, character in that uh, Arabia. Arabia, if you go back to the history, the paganism, the people who used to, uh, uh, you, we can call them barbaric, they used to bury their daughters alive just thinking that daughter is something insulting, as a, a daughter is something as an insult to a man. So we, we should not keep the daughters. So they used to bury daughters alive. In that society, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam born and he was able to uh, show the character, portray the character and people used to call him trustworthy, people used to call him truthful. And uh, he married to a richest woman and the pious woman in that area, in Arabia, in Mecca, called Lady Khadija Salaamu Alaihi And uh, he was doing trade out of his uh, investment the capital in fact given by her and why she observed the character of this man she proposed interesting and, yes and then uh, he him, he asked the uncle uncle abu talib his uncle on behalf of him and uh, uncle of uh, lady khadija on behalf of lady khadija they arranged this marriage and uh, it's very interesting that our noble prophet was just 25 years of age and Lady Khadija was 40. you got to be kidding us. Listeners, yes. I'm sure you're enjoying yes. this, but we're going to take a break for some music. Salawatun, 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 salawatun. Ya Habibi, Ya Rasuli, O oh beloved, seal of prophets, you are the guide to reach Allah, the chosen one, Al Mustafa. Ya Habibi, Ya Rasuli, O oh beloved, seal of prophets, you are the guide. The chosen one, Al Mustafa, you are the guide to reach Allah. The chosen one, Al Mustafa.